Hello there, YouTubers. Tonight, we're going to be looking at fancy blinky blinky LEDs. What you're looking at, some of you are probably already able to tell, is in fact a VU meter. And what this is in its entirety is the display module out of a Sharp RT100 cassette deck that I once took apart. And uh, Sharp always did this in a very, very nice way, and uh, definitely a way that uh, the uh, electronics uh, hobbyist appreciates. They put everything onto a separate module. We got uh, power going in this thing, we got two audio signals going in this thing, and this is what we're getting out. It doesn't get much easier than this. This over here is just a little power LED that uh, Sharp had going on for some reason. Uh, then we have the 5 LED per channel VU meter, and this is in fact 5 LEDs per channel, the uh, lower, the lowest units. On a lot of cassette decks they just stay lit constantly to make things look a bit more fancy, but on this one, uh, that's the reason why they put the power LED, I guess. On this one, if there is no signal, they are all off, all the LEDs. Uh, the unit works using two integrated circuits. These are some uh, BA6137s, and I think those were made by Toshiba. I'm not sure about that one, though. And, well, hooking this up, well, as I already said, it's easy. Going from right to left, we got ground, that's the one with a stripe. We got uh, power in, 12 volts. We got uh, two audio signals, just regular line-level audio signals. And, well, there we go. As you can see, i got plenty of alligator clip leads going, and yes, I have to get some new alligator clip leads, because, gee, those are looking sad. I mean, look at that one. That is toast. It has been toasted in some high-voltage experiments. But, uh, got uh, 12 volts going into the unit, and yet another crazy broken alligator clip lead construction right there. Um, 12 volts in this case, of course, uh, with this module it's easy to tell because, well, we got that power LED and when the brightness of that is about right, then uh, the voltage has got to be about right. 12 volt, of course, is a standard value. So, uh, and we have that. This is a VU meter unit out of a mid-1980s Sharp RT100. Now, you may be saying, well, why is there no audio to go along with a blinky blinky? Well, ask the copyright police. And here we have the next one. This time, a two-colored display. And if we zoom out, you can see this is pretty much identical to what we've just seen before. And that is, for a pretty good reason, this is out of a Sharp RT-10, which was the model that they had before they brought out the RT-100. Quite a bit more fancy, as you can see. Um, we have, of course, two colors, two uh, green and red for the display. We're also using different microchips. These are Sanyo LB1416s. Got a pair of them, and as you can see, they do require more external circuitry. We've got more resistors, more capacitors. Power LED is a tiny little dot type thing. Uh, and, uh, well, other than that, it's all pretty much the same. And I guess, if you wanted to, you could actually uh, swap the two modules with each other. Put the fancier one into the RT100. Once again, we got uh, black for ground, red is for plus 12 volts, got orange, got uh, yellow, that's for the audio signals. Once again, messy hookup. Interesting thing about this is uh, I have two of them. Look at that. Now this uh, actually did not come out of a another RT10. This came out of a sharp compact stereo that had a cassette part that was largely based on the RT10. And this... Uh, it, there is actually one difference, and that is there is no power LED. Of course, a compact stereo had, uh, you know, had dial lights for the tuner and whatnot, and probably quite a few more lights, so another power LED on the cassette part was unnecessary, so I left it away. But other than that, of course, including the uh, hookup 
it is identical. And the nice thing about having two of these modules is uh, you can actually uh, go ahead and uh, rip them apart and take the integrated circuits out because uh, you can actually hook these LB1416s up in a row. So with all this I could get a 10 LED per channel display in stereo of course since we got four of these chips and uh, well I may or may not actually try that. So there we have another two display modules. And here we have a rather sad looking meter unit. This has actually had quite an interesting life. It came out of a silver brand compact stereo that I got years and years and years ago at a flea market. Originally it had a rather weird red plastic frame around it that uh, basically simulated another LED in between the individual real LEDs. So this is a 5 LED per channel meter, but I think uh, the final result with that frame around it was like, it, it looked like 11 LEDs per channel or something like that. Kind of ridiculous. This one also uh, quite similar to what we've just seen before. It's using Sanyo LB1405 integrated circuits, so that's probably an older revision. And it definitely has to have a different type of input voltage range. Is uh, the chips that we've seen before, or the modules we've seen before, they all took line level inputs. This thing was designed to be hooked up to the output of a power amplifier. This was uh, a, um, a meter for the amplifier part of that compact stereo. And as you can see, it does have some uh, variable resistors to kind of adjust the input level coming in. Uh, however, even with those turned all the way down, as you can no doubt see, it still is uh, very much on the low side. now. I'm not sure uh, this isn't even the right screwdriver. Uh, if I turn this thing, so you can see, uh, you can't see anything. I adjust it just right, you can see this thing does flash quite happily on and off. Now it's not doing anything anymore. Um, now, so this thing is working, but uh, the input level is just too low. The uh, CD player that I have going as a signal source is not strong enough to make this work. So there we have yet another module, and this, uh, wow, that, that silver stereo system was a rather cheap one. I mean, you can see this, uh, <laughs> this is kind of a low-tech circuit board. Already had to fix one of the solder joints because that was broken, that one up there trace had ripped off. But, uh, oh, there we have that thing. Still works. And here we have another two-colored meter. A couple of more LEDs going on this time. Uh, some of you might remember this from a recent video. This was the mask it had over it. Yep, this is, or was, part of the ultrasound cassette deck that uh, I took apart not too long ago. And uh, several interesting things about this. Uh, well, first of all, kind of a weird setup. As you can see, they kind of uh, got this uh, level adjustment board wired up in between. That's kind of weird. Um, and then, most interesting part, as you can see, we are using Sanyo LB1416s. Now, we have already seen those before, and yes, those are for five LEDs per channel. So, if we count, as you can see, we got seven LEDs per channel. What? Now, the lowest units are just, uh, well, basically just power indicator lights. If I just uh, disconnect one of the signals uh, from this, you can see the lowest unit just stays lit. However, that leaves one LED that does not get its signal from, uh, from uh, those chips. And what I guess is uh, that uh, one of these LEDs 
is uh, somehow hooked up with uh, these transistors to another LED and uh, they just show pretty much the same behavior. Actually these might be the two. As you can see they are doing pretty much the same thing as they are flashing. Some minor differences caused by the transistors. That's kind of interesting. Kind of an interesting setup going on right there. And now look at the back of the circuit board. That is quality. That is quality coming out of that factory. Ugh. And here we have a mono edition that refuses to work. Uh, this is using another LB1416, however, uh, this is in a different application. Uh, the other ones that we've seen, they all had one input. This one somehow manages to have two. Uh, on the other ones, that uh, pin has just been pulled to ground using a resistor. So this one has a stereo input going on and it does have ground, it does have 12 volts B plus and well for some reason either it just uh, lights up the lowest unit permanently or it uh, lights them up all. It's uh, kind of a weird thing. Record LED down there, little indicator LED that is not hooked up as you can see. Uh, so, I'm not sure what's up with this. I'll we'll probably have to investigate in the data sheet a little more. Well, that's definitely not behaving as expected. And here we have a very modern thing. This view meter is another sharp, at least it seems to be. As you can see, they do have their own custom chip on there. IR2E27A sharp. Uh, also very modern because uh, look at this uh, fancy modern circuit board with printed resistors. Yep, those are printed resistors. That uh, kind of confused me at first, but they are in fact printed resistors. As you can see, I already cannibalized this for a couple of LEDs. <laughs> I actually had to replace this one to make it work. But uh, basically, uh, once again, the lower two are constantly lit. Damn, this resistor is getting hot. Uh, I guess I... Oh, voltage should not be too high, but that thing's getting hot, I tell ya. Uh, as you can see, some weird LEDs. So you can see, they have a uh, kind of a reflector-shaped thing. So they have just a very sharp dot in the middle rather than this uh, bright kind of light that this uh, replacement LED has. The chip does require higher input signals compared to the other ones that we've seen because as you can see <laughs> meter isn't doing all too much but it does work as you can see. And uh, uh, once again, messy hookup, and it is running off at of 12 volts, but that resistor is way too hot. I guess this is, I don't know, maybe 9 volts, something like that, but yeah, seems to be about right. So there is that, and this thing also ends our little uh, look at VU meters. And now if you say, wow, that's boring. That's not fancy enough. Well, take a look at what I have right here. Boom! That's a uh, fluorescent uh, display, a uh, vacuum fluorescent display, VFD. And I once tried to figure out what this chip does and how it works, but of course you also have to heat these things using a, a heater voltage, you know, 3 volts or something. Uh, in the end, I didn't manage to get it to work, so we're not going to be seeing it in this video. This is going to be purely LED. Well, that's it. Thank you for watching, and see you again soon.